So what uh what number do we use for our uh, pH one? pH one, that's right. So that's a standard. So any um, Phillips head is going to be a number two standard. Uh, and then you have, so that's pH is Phillips head and then so on. So these two right here in the center that we're doing, this one and this one, these actually are the screws for the keyboard. So every time you take the back off, you are removing or backing out at least the screws that are doing the keyboard. Just like before, we get in here. And which way do we want to pry? Towards you. All right, we want to pull back towards us, right? So we want to bend it away. We don't want to go this way because that's prying on us. So we got to go towards us. So y'all probably went over this bad here, but when you remove these, remove from this one, not this one. When you're doing yeah. batteries, so remove, remove this side here. Once we get this plastic, this uh, tape peeled back, there's a tab here. I did have a question about that. Uh, do we use the blue electric tape if we replace the battery so we know that it's been replaced? So we actually did that on one. Um, I think someone that was, was yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was we decided, yeah, that, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. That way it's, you know, it's kind of yeah. a visual yeah. that it's been replaced. So there are four screws that hold the battery in place. You have one, two, three, four. And um, because this, uh, it, it goes into this metal bracket, the metal bracket is actually pretty tight. If you do it right, and I might not because I'm doing it with a, uh, one of these, you can actually pull it out just enough to where it actually stays in the metal. And you don't have to remove the bolts. They just kind of sit in the metal. So once we get those out, it just lift up and you slide it out of that little, little rubber piece there. There's actually a pen that sticks up in the middle there. So you gotta go up and out. And there's your battery. If you ever see a battery and it's got a bulge in it, like it's kind of mushroomed, that's bad. That's really bad. You wanna let someone know immediately. So that's, that's what they do before they blow up. All right. So now that we've done that, let's put these up here as well because we're gonna flip this over. There are several ribbons here. You have this ribbon here, this goes to your trackpad and the ribbons are labeled. So this one says MB and down here it says TP. Who can guess what those mean? Motherboard and trackpad. That's right. And so this cord right here, this is the one that goes to our keyboard. It doesn't have another label because the key, it's actually attached to the keyboard. But you see right here, motherboard. Same thing here for this ribbon. You have the IO and your motherboard. Your IO, IO is your on and off switch. Um, but this is actually called a daughter board. Motherboard, daughter board. Y'all went over SSD? Yes, we did. Okay, you're talking about how you have to insert it at an angle? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so once we get that undone, we're going to lift up the back side of this. Um, this holds the ribbon in and just kind of locks it down. So once we um, lift that up, it lets the ribbon go and we can slide the ribbon out. There's a blue tab on each ribbon that you can grab and pull on. All right. So then we're going to open it up. Just how that is. Uh, what I like to do, and this makes it a lot easier, 
is I use my tool, the same tool that I use to take everything apart with, and you can insert them directly in to the screw holes. Okay, here and here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert it into the screw hole using my hand to kind of put pressure on the edges here, here, maybe here. I'm gonna push until it releases. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Push, let it release. Once it releases, you can pop it up the rest of the way and it comes directly out. You can see here, you have these little notches on the top. That means it has to be inserted, okay? And if you look closely here, there are little like pins that stick up all across here. And those fit in these holes and they kind of pop it down, keep it in place instead of like having it screwed down like they used to. So that's off when putting it back on, you get your new one, you'll line it up and you'll take your ribbon and you'll slide your ribbon through the slot. If you can, this one is not playing nicely. If the slot, don't want to tear it. It's pretty difficult to tear. Pull it all the way through so you can see it all of it in there. And then come back to this side. And this is where you want to start pressing it down, okay? It can be difficult sometimes to get all the little pieces. So if you need, I like to take the tool, just pull off the end so that it's flat. And wherever I have a raised piece, it's a little tough to push it down. I'll just give it a push with, with this. So there's one right there, pop it down. Okay, you can tell where they are because it's it's raised. It's not this part's good right here. You can see that the the zero the O and the zero and the nine are all much higher than the plastic. Over here, it's almost flush. So there's one that needs to be pushed down there. Same with the edges. Just doing it with a tool just saves your fingers from getting boogered up. Usually one here in the middle somewhere. There it is. Once you get them all down, you're good. Put it back over. Make sure your tab is up. And you want to push it in there. Now there's actually a line here. It's very hard to see. There's actually a little dotted line on that. You see that? See that little, that little line on there, this little white line? It goes all the way across right there. And when we take it in here and we insert it, that line is flush up against the plastic, okay? If it's not flush and it's off at an angle, then it's not in there all the way and it won't get a good connection. And you just push your little piece back down and you're good to go. Place your battery back in, get down out of the hole, ground everything. I like to go ahead and plug it up. Just makes me feel better. This bracket, it kind of looks exact same both ways, um, but luckily they put a little indicator on here that says up. You see that? So you know which side goes up. Only it matters which one of these you tighten down first over here. Uh, but I always do black. I don't know. Just, it just feels right, I guess. Put your back back on, tighten down, you're done. Any questions? Yeah, Oh. <laughs> yes, Mr. Lipinski. No, we are not supposed to take the keyboard off of the spudger. Doing it the way I showed you is, is much cleaner. You can do it with the spudger, but it's, it's, it takes longer and it's harder. Because you're, um, the way that those little holes are set up and the notch that's in there, it grips it 
And if you're pulling from the side, it actually it puts a bend in it. It makes it more difficult to actually pop up. Great question. Anyone else? Any questions about battery? Like, when should I unplug the battery? What message might you get to say that, or clues to tell you the battery could be failing? Um, so you'll get a student come in, will say that um, they plug the bad the charger in, and and when they unplug the charger, it just turns off. Or uh, when they plug uh, the charger in, it charged to 100, but within five minutes, it's dead again. Where it says it's a, at 70%, and they unplug it, and it goes to 1%, and then dies. Those are all typical battery failure modes. So if you see those, you see it, it, you can plug up to another charger and see if that makes a difference. Um, sometimes we can, if it's at the desk, you know, I like to plug them in and like leave them there for like an hour, see them charge, and I'll take the charge and then unplug it and watch it drop. That way I can confirm that it, it's not their charger, you know, it's actually the battery. Um, keyboards, what you'll see with keyboards is the, uh, the keys will pop off, they'll be missing. Um, sometimes what happens is they go, they go bad in groups. So sometimes you'll see like the zero and the O key won't, won't work or the zero and the P and they just, they're always they're usually together. R and, R and four, something like that. They're always together. Those two will not work. They say, I'm pushing, it's not happening. Those are replacements for the keyboard. Now, if you get a keyboard and the complaint is, there's another one, two more that are popped up. Um, the complaint is that when I push it, it doesn't go down all the way. And what we see there is there's little plastic pieces all through here. And sometimes there's little plastic pieces break. It doesn't mess with the function of the keyboard. They do break and they get underneath of the keys. And so you'll go to push it down and you'll feel that maybe like the corner stays up while you're able to push the rest of it down. Um, you can get that up by going underneath of it and using the um, tweezers and pulling the plastic piece out. And then you can usually fix it that way. Usually it takes me a couple minutes just to fix it that way. Gotcha. So you can pull the keys out with like the tweezers to fix like sticky keys. If, like, so yeah, what I, what I usually do is I usually get my spudger and I go underneath of them and then I'll, I'll pry on it and just get, I don't want to pull it all the way off. I just want to get it up enough to where I can get underneath of it. Mm -hmm. um, there's tweezers, I think y'all have all seen them where they're curved. All right, they're pretty pointy. Uh, and then I get that in there, grab the plastic piece, and I like to twist it so that when I'm grabbing it, I'm twisting like this. I'm not pulling straight up because it's kind of easy for it to get caught on something. But if I twist, it's easier for me to get it out. Any other questions? No? Seems easy enough, right? All right, good deal.